In our previous two videos, we have done both a two-sample z-test for comparing proportions as well as a two-sample z-confidence interval for comparing proportions. We used the cash for quitters example. What I did not do was show you how to use jump to find the p-value or to find the critical value for the hypothesis test or confidence interval respectively. What this video is going to do is show you how to use jump to leverage that software to get the p-value and critical value respectively. So first I'm going to show you how to get the p-value for this hypothesis test. But really quick, a review. For our hypothesis test, our null hypothesis was that the difference in these two proportions was zero. And the alternative, because we wanted to know if the financial incentive helped or improved patients' outcomes, the alternative hypothesis was that the difference in proportions was greater than zero. And that meant that pi 1 was greater than pi 2. Our z-test statistic in this case was 4.94, and we said that this was a big z-test statistic. I even drew a normal curve and plotted where 4.94 would, would show up. And even using the empirical rule, we said that this was going to have a low probability. That low probability is our p-value. But what I want to do now is show you how to find that low probability, that p-value using jump. But we have to remember that we have this right-tailed alternative and that's going to be very important for our p-value. So first thing we need to do is go to jump. Remember to find p-values or any probabilities using a distribution calculator. We go to add-ins, teaching modules, and then we go to the distribution calculator. Because this is a z distribution, the distribution we're going to use is the normal. So we don't have to change that and we don't have to change any of the parameters. The z distribution is the normal distribution with a mean of 0 and the standard deviation of 1. So all this stuff in the top left hand corner is not going to be changed. To find the p-value, we input a value that is our test statistic and calculate a probability. So the p in p-value stands for probability. And so if we're calculating a p-value, we're calculating that probability value and we're not even going to change this other option here. Then what we do is we come down to calculations. And we want to make sure that we are picking the correct direction or the correct inequality for our p-value. And all that means is that we are picking the inequality sign that matches what we have in our alternative hypothesis. To flip back really quickly, our alternative was a right tail. We said that we believe that the financial rewards group helps, or being in a financial reward helps people quit smoking. So we believe that pi 1 is greater than pi 2. So that means we want to pick the second option. We want to pick the right tail. And we can see when we do that, it's shading in the right tail of the curve. So we only want probabilities that are greater than the test statistic that we find. The next thing we do is input our value. The value in this case is our test statistic. Our test statistic from before was 4.94. So we want the probability that we get a value from this normal distribution that is our test statistic or greater. So we want something that is at least as big as 4.94 when this null hypothesis is true. When I hit enter, I get a p-value that is less than 0.001. We can see even that 4.94 is not on this scale. It is way up here. So if I increase or change my axis to show this, so if I go from negative 5 to positive 5 so that we can see 4.94 on here, it is shading in this region from 4.94 and above. There is not very much probability under that tiny little part of that curve and that is what is reflected here. This is that less than 0 0.0001. This is consistent with our idea that 4.94 is a big test statistic. It is unusual. It's so unusual that if there really were no difference between those who have the financial reward and those who do not have financial reward and the probability of quitting smoking, we would see this less than 1 100th percent of the time. The other thing that we need to do is we need to be able to find a critical value. The critical value is the z star in this case for a confidence interval. In the example that we looked at last time we found a 95 percent confidence interval. 
Because this is still a z distribution, we are going to leave the distribution set to normal, the mean at zero, and the standard deviation of one. For the type of calculation, however, we want to input the probability and calculate the values. That confidence level, that 95% confidence level, is the probability, and what we want to do is calculate the critical value, that z star. So we're kind of using the distribution backward. But from here, we use the uh, distribution calculator the same way we did for the t-distribution calculator. So we want to input the central probability, and we're going to say we have 0.95. So we're going to put 95% of the probability in the center. And that's where this classic 1.96 comes from. So whatever your confidence level is what goes in the, 90, is what goes in the probability box. We want to make sure that we're putting that probability in the center of our distribution, and that's how we get our 1.96 critical value. So what we're really doing when we're finding p-values and critical values using the normal distribution calculator is the exact same thing that we did when we were using the t-distribution calculator. The only thing we don't have to do is worry about degrees of freedom because there are no degrees of freedom for the normal distribution.